Condition monitoring initiatives have proven to decrease downtime while increasing visibility into the overall health of automation equipment. Knowing when an asset's gonna fail prior to failure has huge value, but vibration, temperature, and other condition monitoring data doesn't belong in the PLC. This data belongs in a higher level system. SCADA and MES systems are designed to collect data and send out necessary alarming. But not every manufacturer has a SCADA system. Although the benefits can be big, so are the costs potentially. The Condition Monitoring Toolkit from Balif, commonly referred to as the CMTK, is a perfect first step for manufacturers who want to realize the benefits provided by condition monitoring initiatives, but don't have a SCADA system in place in their facility. This device is configurable, so no programming is involved. It handles the data collection, provides a clean, customizable dashboard, and can send out all necessary alarms, either as an output directly from the controller or via email or text. We really love this device at NEF because it checks all of our boxes for our rules of IoT hardware selection. This controller is expandable, scalable, and open. If we start with vibration analysis as a pilot project, for example, we can easily expand to include temperature, uh, fluid power system health, or even collect advanced IO link metrics or pull PLC tags. It's scalable, so if a SCADA system is deployed down the road, the CMTK can easily be configured as an edge device communicating MQTT and a myriad of other IoT protocols. And with a Linux backend, it's open. We can install Node-RED or a slew of other applications. So this thing is sweet. Let's take a closer look at configuring the CMTK from Balif. All right, so before we get in and we look at the setup uh, and the configuration of the controller, I wanna walk through really quickly and just kind of explain the demo that we're gonna be using here today for this exercise. Uh, here we have the BCM sensor from Balif. This is the condition monitoring sensor. It gives us three axes of vibration as well as surface temperature. There are variants out there that offer relative humidity as well. We're not using that for today's demo, but just be aware it exists. Um, I have this guy connected on a piece of DIN rail to an unbalanced motor, uh, just a small motor, and then I can control uh, all that here with this little controller. Our BCM sensor is connected to the Balif controller, coming in here, and then we're communicating ethernet into the back of a, a wireless radio from Phoenix Contact. Uh, these radios are great for condition monitoring initiatives, especially on legacy equipment that uh, don't currently have ethernet drops. So uh, this little bad boy can be configured as a client or an access point or one of each. Uh, for today's exercise, we're just talking directly to the PC. We're gonna go in and we're gonna talk about how to set up and configure the CMTK to display different colors on gauges and graphs based on the vibration data and ISO standards. So the first thing we need to do is make sure the BCM sensor is connected. So we'll click on menu, settings. Under sensors, we wanna make sure the sensor is connected. If not, it's time to plug it in. Uh, since we see it here, we know it is. Then for this video, we're gonna assume the sensor is configured correctly to display vibration uh, velocity data. Uh, we can also configure it to display acceleration data. Next, we'll go to the main dashboard and click the main tile. That's gonna launch Grafana. And here we can see the default graphical interface. So by default, the software generates a graph and gauge for each variable on the sensor. So in the case of the BCM sensor, we have contact temperature and vibration velocity RMS on the X, Y, and Z axis. So you have four gauges, four graphs, all these graphs by default are blue and auto scaled, and the information is default. So in this video, we're gonna talk about how to change the color to basically represent the ISO standard, and we'll just worry about the vibration values. The first thing we're gonna do is edit vibration velocity RMS on the X axis. We'll use drop down menu, select edit, and then the field tab, and then basically fix scale the gauge. So we'll specify minimum value of zero and a maximum value of 20, which represents 20 millimeters per second. Once we fix the scale, now we wanna add thresholds. We'll leave the blue for the baseline, which we'll call severity zone A. We'll add severity zone B, which the threshold was 2.3 millimeters per second and that color is gonna be green. We can select that by clicking on this little button. Next, we'll select severity zone C, which is four and, four and a half millimeters per second. And again, we'll click on this little color dot, it'll pop up a menu, and we'll select the color yellow. Lastly, we'll select severity zone D, which is 7.1 millimeters per second in the color red. Then we'll hit apply, and we'll see the changes have gone into effect. That only impacted one gauge. So we're gonna quickly do the same for the other gauges. Again, drop down menu, 
edit, field, scale, fix scale from zero to 20 millimeters per second user defined. Next, we'll add thresholds, severity zone B, green, severity zone C, yellow, and last, severity zone D, and the color red. Then we'll repeat for the Z axis. Again, edit, field, scale, 0 to 20, add thresholds, severity zone B, green, severity zone C, yellow, and severity zone D. Oops, that color should be red. Now all three gauges look the same. So now when we turn the motor on, our unbalanced motor, we'll see the color change on each axis. And this is really uh, important because it showcases the importance of multi-axis vibration sensing. We can see the unbalanced motor is impacting the x-axis, and then it's already in severity zone D, which is the danger zone, whereas vibration velocity on the y-axis is still green in the normal operating mode. This, again, this really showcases the importance of multi-axis sensing. Next, let's look at the graphs, but we'll save first. Save early, save often. That's what my high school teacher said. Um, <laughs> next, we'll look at the vibration velocity on the x-axis. So again, we'll click the arrow for the drop-down menu and edit. The first thing I like to do is alias the graph. So I'll just say x-axis. And now we can choose different colors. Um, I'm gonna leave it green. Next, I wanna change scaling. I don't want it to auto scale. So I'll fix it to zero to 20 millimeters per second in the X axis under panel. So that's fixing my scaling. And the next thing I wanna do is change, instead of looking at the mean, which is default, I wanna use the last, uh, the last measurement. So it'll, we'll see the most up-to-date information from the sensor. Next, I'll go to alerts and we uh, get to set up alarming. We'll specify when we wanna get an alarm. On the alert tab, we'll click create alert. So I'm gonna select a variable. And here I want the uh, vibration velocity RMS value. So I'm gonna evaluate instead of every minute, we're gonna change to one second for this video, just so we can see it update it faster. And the condition has to last for at least five seconds uh, prior to sending an alarm. The reason being here is that, that noise or spikes may cause unnecessary alerts. After I set up that rule, I set up the condition for that rule. The condition is when. So instead of an average, we'll look at the last value and 7.1 millimeters per second, which is severity zone D. So anything above 7.1 millimeters per second will send out an email alert. And this is where we could specify who gets the email as well as the body of the message. And hopefully this goes without saying, but the email server settings need to be configured correctly for the uh, graphical interface to successfully send these emails. So now we've had this set up, we'll hit apply and save changes. Now we see that we have an alert, and when we energize the unbalanced motor, and as soon as we exceeded the 7.1 millimeters on the x-axis, we can see the warning is generated because we've exceeded the thresholds, and five seconds later, the alarm is sent. Now when I turn the motor off, we can see we have an okay condition. When we go back to the dashboard, we can see the dashboard change colors when we implemented the alert to state that it's logging. And if we click this bell icon here, we can see all the conditions. So you can see here the machine was running okay. We have a t uh, date and time stamp. This is the warning when we exceeded the threshold and then five seconds later we sent out an alert because the condition persisted and then dropped back to normal. And if we turn the motor on again, we can see the icon change and if we click the bell, we can see the same changes. What's cool about this is we can change this image to represent whatever asset that we're monitoring. So if you have multiple assets, you could have a different picture for each asset that, that's on there. This concludes the basic setup for the CMTK, configuring the controller for the first time with the BCM vibration sensor. Oh, we can also go under user 
and put the background in dark mode, uh, which is one of my personal favorites. But there's lots of things you can do to control the aesthetics of the tiles and kind of what they look like. But hopefully this overview gave a, a, a good idea of what to expect from a functionality and configuration standpoint. Thanks for watching. Reach out to Neff and our team of automation experts to see how we can partner with you on your condition monitoring initiatives.